Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Is an anemic domain model a bad thing? Well, most would say it's an anti-pattern and you should avoid it. But is it really that bad? Well, to me, it depends on your intent. I'm gonna explain what it is so you can tell if you're using it or not, and what the possible alternatives are. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, Check out the link in the description. So the example I'm using through this video, and I'll show some code here, is related to this concept of, let's say, food delivery, and we have a shipment. So a shipment consists of picking up food at, say, a restaurant, and then delivering it to you at your house, apartment, whatever the case may be. The key thing here is that a shipment goes through kind of some status changes and a state change. So the pickup, the way the state transitions are, is we go from in transit from that pickup to arrive, meaning the delivery driver arrived, arrived at the restaurant, then they leave the restaurant, they're departed. Now we're going heading to the del delivery destination. This could be your house, apartment, and we go from in transit to arrive to departed. So that's the example I'll be using. So what is an anemic domain model? What does that actually refer to? So the idea here is that you have a domain model and the concept of say our shipment and these stops, the pickup and the delivery, and you have an object model that represents this. So in my example here, I have this shipment and it has maybe a shipment ID, it has some stops. And the key thing to point out here is that this is generally about property based where really these objects are just data buckets. They have no behavior. Now you may think they have behavior like I've done here where I maybe have some other methods that are maybe getting or setting data like I do have in the stop where, okay, it's just data and it kind of looks like I have behavior, but there really isn't. There's just a setter for setting the status, maybe setter for setting the arrive if these were set to private or if they're public with get sets. But the idea here really is that there is no logic within these things. Now where the logic lives is generally in some type of service or manager that these are generally usually called and here's an example of one. So I have this shipment service and it has different methods on it. But the key point here is that you they're taking, in some of these examples, they're actually taking that shipment object, that object model, that is the shipment and the stops. And all our logic and state changes exist within this service or shipment manager, as they're often called. So this is where our, our actual logic and state changes occur. Now, in some of these cases, different ways people implement these, sometimes they're just actually taking our object model here. In other cases, I created kind of a, a similar type of example here, is that they're actually doing kind of the data access along with it and then doing the, the state changes as well. So really regardless of whether you have the data access in it or not, it's still that there's this clear separation between the actual functionality and the behavior and then the data being completely separate. So what's the issue with this? Well, it depends what your intent is. If you think you have a domain model, you don't. So that's your issue, is that you have an object model that's representing kind of the structure of what your domain is, and maybe even a one-to-one -one or slightly uh, different variation of what your data model is that you're persisting and mapping to, but all the behavior is completely separate. That's the issue that people have is that you think you have a domain model, but you don't. Now, if you're using an anemic domain model, let me know in the comments if that's actually your intent that you think you have a domain model. I actually suspect most people aren't after that. What they're really trying to do is just have some separation and some type of layering. What they're really closer to are, a tra are transaction scripts. So in my example here, we have these kind of entity services or managers that are interacting with these data buckets, these anemic domain models, and then they are using some type of ORM to kind of do that map mapping to hit their database. Now, the way I actually kind of think of this is, like I said, I actually view this as closer to a transaction script than I actually do a domain model. It's kind of this in-between state where when you're writing transaction scripts, which I'll describe here in a second, is it's a lot more procedural. But because there's mixed concerns of maybe data access and various uh, validation logic, people try to move this to managers and services and then don't go all the way to understanding or, or think they need and potentially they don't, they don't an actual domain model. So the intent of a transaction script is just to handle a single request. 
So in the sense of a web app, we could think of having a controller action and whether this logic lives directly there or you pass it off and invoke the transaction script. The transaction script is what contains all the logic and kind of the, the state changes in the persistence and handling all of that. So another way of looking at this is that we have different controllers invoking with different actions, invoking a transaction script. Now here's where the issue people have is when you have different logic in different transaction script that ultimately starts getting duplicated and you start seeing the duplication. And then you have this issue where you want one transaction script to call another transaction script. And this becomes difficult if you don't have something that you're sharing between different transaction scripts. This is ultimately, I believe, where people land into anemic domain models and start creating these kind of entity services or managers. So here's what a typical transaction script will look like. So we have this request that comes in and this is our transaction script that handles that request. That specific request we're handling is the arrive action when the driver, the delivery driver say arrives at the restaurant. So we're doing things like we're getting all the stops. We have some logic here to see that the stop ID passed in is actually valid. We also have some logic saying, well, you can't arrive if the stop isn't in transit. Cause that's the, the kind of the state change initially, the state that it has to start at. And we also have some other logic here saying that the stop that we're trying to arrive for, that all the previous stops have to be departed, meaning we can't arrive at the, uh, the final destination if we haven't even picked up the food yet at the restaurant. So we have this various logic and we have state changes and we're just doing this directly. Now the difference between this is that we're not assuming we have some object model that rep represents our domain. We simply know whether we are using direct SQL or whatever your data persistence is or ORM, you know you're dealing with a data model and that's you're aware of this, that's the intent. So your transaction script kind of has all that logic bundled in, has your different concerns and business logic and is doing that persistence in those state changes. So what the alternative is just having a domain model. And what that means is not separating the data and the behavior like we are with the anemic domain model. We don't have any service or manager, but rather we have a domain model that is encapsulating the data and exposing behaviors. We're hiding the data. So that means that when we have our controller, some action, we pass off some request, that request, what it really is doing is that handler is kind of delegating, okay, I need to call this, get the domain model out, say our aggregate, and then call the appropriate method on it. And then from there, it can also deal with the persistence. So what that looks like in code is that I have the shipment aggregate root that represents our domain model. And when we construct it, we build it up, we get, we provide it a list of stops. But from there, there's actually no getters or setters. There's no properties, there's no state changes that we're making on this aggregate route. Rather, we're invoking all the behaviors that are gonna do that validation and those state changes to the data internally. So here's the arrive method on it, which is exactly the same as the one in the transaction script, but we're also calling arrive, which is on the stop, and it's doing that some additional um, logic as well as the state changes. And the same thing here, we have some gets, public gets, but we don't even have any um, public setters, so we can't set anything directly on the stops. So to invoke this, what we have here, what looks like a transaction script that's handing a specific request, but what it's doing now is it's using some repository as an example to get out our aggregate root and then call the appropriate method on our aggregate root that's gonna do that logic, that state change, and then we can persist it with our repository. So is an anemic domain model a terrible thing, an anti-pattern that you should avoid? Well, it depends what your intent is. If you're trying to create a domain model because you have a lot of complexity, yes, it's probably a terrible idea. If you do not have a lot of complexity, you should probably try to move something towards a transaction script. That's very simple. I see this all the time where there's a lot of questions about kind of domain driven design and people trying to get pattern happy about trying to apply aggregates and repositories and all these things. It's for complexity. It's for managing complexity and isolating different things like behaviors and data and where that lives. If you, if you don't have that, don't go down this road of trying to do it. Just stick with something like a transaction script. If you're in a transaction script and things get more and more complicated and you notice that there's code duplication and you have a lot of complexity, then start thinking about actually implementing a domain model. Hide the data, encapsulate the data, expose behaviors. Don't separate them necessarily into some type of 
entity service or entity manager, kind of pick what side you want to be on. Do you need to create a domain model or you do not? If you don't and it's not comp complex, maybe a transaction script is the simplest thing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.